Thank you for tuning in to episode three of the More Than Capable Mompreneur podcast. Today's episode is actually the interview that I did on Allison Scholl's Social Media for Mompreneurs podcast. There's a link to Allison's show in the show notes. And if you're not already subscribed to her podcast, you need to do so today. But after you listen into this episode, of course, Allison will help you fine tune your personal brand and grow your business on social media in just minutes a day. Because let's face it, as working mompreneurs, that's all we have, right? But even with that limited schedule, your business has to have systems in place to protect your sanity and if you want your business to grow. So in this episode, we're talking about sexy systems. Yep, you heard me. The sexy systems you're going to want to implement so that your side gig has a strong foundation to grow on. Whether you are just starting your business or you're looking to grow your business, I want to make sure you have the basic systems in place to help you run it more efficiently. So today you're going to learn why I now refer to them as sexy systems, my definition of a business system, and three of the six basic systems every mompreneur needs to implement no matter what phase of the journey you're in. If you can't tell or didn't know by now, I am very passionate about helping mompreneurs with service-based businesses use the mom cracks of time to create a more intentional business that supports their lifestyle. So I have a free download available that's going to help you identify some of the tasks that you need to go ahead and implement, and they're related to the three systems we're going to discuss in this episode. The checklist contains 15 tasks that you can integrate automation into to save you time in your back office. There is a link to that checklist in the show notes for you to grab your copy. So if you're ready to create some sexy systems so you can grow your business to support your lifestyle, then you're in for a treat. Hey there, mama. Are you burned out from working, running a business, and raising a family? I know it's hard and there's no manual to help you get it all done without the mom guilt. I've been where you are, and I want us to navigate this journey together. I'm Shannon Baker, your coffee-loving host, and I'd like to welcome you to the More Than Capable Mompreneur podcast. We're part of a new wave of working women that focus on fulfilling our purpose and raising our families before profit. It's time we stop letting fear hold us back and accept that we are enough and we do enough. This podcast will feature interviews, trainings, practical lifestyle tips and strategies you can implement and the mom cracks of time so you can take care of the necessary things and grow your business without burning out. So grab your cup of coffee, your favorite sparkling water, or pour a glass of your favorite wine, and let's get on with the show because we are more than capable mompreneurs. Hello, Shannon. Welcome to the show. Hi, Allison. I'm so excited to be a guest on here. And I'm really excited to have you on the show. And I'm pretty excited about our topic today. But before we dive into our sexy systems, I would like you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your business. Okay. Well, my business is Socially Savvy Vertical Alignment, which I started almost eight years ago. It'll be eight years in April. I actually started out as a virtual assistant, um, so doing the work for others. And I was working full time. My daughter was starting school and I just hated having to leave her in someone else's care to go to school and someone else picked her up. So I was having coffee with my girlfriends, um, of course, coffee chats. And um, she asked me, she was like, well, with all the things that you do, have you ever thought about becoming a virtual assistant? So I did the research and started my business. And eventually I decreased my um, hours at my full-time job and started doing my business um, part-time and grew it to where I then started doing it part-time um, in a couple of years. And my previous full-time job actually became a part-time client. So I reversed the two. But there was one thing I noticed over time that my clients were missing and they were processes. So it was a tug of war to get things done because while I wanted to complete the task, I didn't have the instructions that I needed to complete it the way that they want. So after going through that process for years, I saw that there was a void that I needed to fill and that was helping business owners get those processes in place so that whether they wanted to run their business as a solopreneur 
or start to outsource tasks, that the processes would be there. So it would be a smoother um, handoff in the process. And that is how my business transitioned from me being a virtual assistant to being a business operations strategy. And I think your business is such a great business because I've learned so much from you, Shannon, and I'm still learning. And that's really our topic today. And a lot of people listening are probably wondering, why on earth did Allison title this Sexy Systems? (laughs) You know, we've talked about this. This can be kind of like a topic, you know, that people put on the back burner or even kind of a boring topic that nobody really wants to do in their business. But in reality, you need to have what you call processes in check to make sure that your business runs smoothly. So the reason why I title it Sexy Systems, because like I said earlier, you're going to feel pretty dang sexy when all of your processes are automated and in order and you can just carry on with your business knowing that you have a great, strong foundation. So when we talk about processes, that's my first question. What processes are you referring to? Um, Well, one, uh, I call them systems only because a system in my definition, and keep in mind, everyone's definition is different. But when I'm speaking, I'm talking about three things combined. Your system is the step-by-step process. You've identified the tools that will help you automate certain steps in that process. And you also identify the people who take care of those steps. So if you're delegating then of course, it's your virtual assistant or whoever is handling that task. If it's you, then you identify yourself in the process. So that's your system. For any business at any stage, there are three basic systems that I feel that every business owner needs to put in place from the beginning. One's a filing system. The second is a scheduling system. And the third is a communication system. But here's the the catch. There are multiple mini systems within those three systems. (laughs) (laughs) So when you said from the beginning, when should we really start to create these systems in our business? Do you feel that everyone should do it from the get-go, either if you're part-time or full-time, or does it really matter how small or big your business is? It really doesn't matter. The smaller you are, more than likely that means you're working a full-time job or you're a full-time mom starting a side hustle, you know, business at home. We don't have time or a lot of time, I'll say, especially to work on our business because we're really working in it. So from the beginning, there are things that we do to keep our business operating that are repetitive. Anything that we do on a consistent basis needs a process, period. And that's from the time that you start your business. Because of course, over time, it's going to be streamlined. The process is going to change, but you won't know what has changed or what you need to change to work more efficiently if you don't have a documented process. So what were the three systems that we should create again? So the first one is a filing system. So of course, that's where you store all of your documents. That's your company documents, anything related to your branding, your passwords, you can't remember those, of course. And I hope <laughs> everyone's using some type of secure password keeper, not a Google document and not notes on your phone. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> any templates that you have, consultant documents, information about your customers, all of that. You need a central location for everything. And don't forget the most important one, your standard operating procedures or your processes that you use to operate your business. That's main system one. So in that system, is that something that you put together on your computer? Is there a specific program that you use to organize all of that? It's up to each person, which most of us use Google Drive or Dropbox. So it's literally just setting up the folders for you to store your information in um, an organized manner so that you can locate it quickly. So for instance, your branding, that's your logo your business plan, you know, your font. So that detailed information about how your business should look everywhere should be stored somewhere so that you can access it, which would include your colors. Say if you're using Canva to create graphics, you need your hex codes or whatever the case may be, your logo. If you have to search for it every single time you need to use it, you just lose time. 
So having my colors written down on a piece of paper in a folder is probably not the most optimal way to be using <laughs> that system. <laughs> well, here's the catch. I have my numbers written down on a sticky in front of my planner as well for quick reference. But my main documents that came from the person who created my logo, they're in one single file in my Google Drive that's named branding. And my logo, my, you know, the card they usually give you that tells you those codes, your fonts and everything. I, I'm sure a graphics person is probably screaming at me like Melissa <laughs> saying that it has a name, but I can't remember what the name is. But anyway, <laughs> that stuff is what you store in your Google Drive folder. And then you can have your, your handy post-it notes that we all use so that you can use it for quick reference. And I like that you mentioned Google Drive and not your computer because a lot of us are on the go and we use our mobile phone for almost, I would say more than 50% of our business. So yeah, I like the idea of having a file in Google Drive where you can access your whole filing process. That's awesome. So your second process, can you dive a little deeper into that one? The um, scheduling system? Yes. I want to know yes. more about scheduling because that is relatively new to me, but for someone who is, has a lot of clients, the whole point of this system is to streamline the process of scheduling your clients, correct? Exactly. Because here's the catch. Um, whether we work our business full-time, part-time, our phone can be a distraction, whether that's emails, text messages, and definitely phone calls, because what you may think is going to be a two to five minute customer call can turn into a 30 minute free consultation. Yes, right. I'm like screaming at free. But if you control your schedule with a scheduling system, which is that scheduling app that you sign up for, I use Acuity, I know you use Calendly. Mm -hmm. What you do with that is limit your availability for phone calls to when it works in that time block. Key is a time block in your schedule. So I know like you have your schedule set up that you have designated days and times that you do podcast interviews and other work. My schedule set up the same way. I do specific calls on specific days. And that's the only time I'm available for those calls. You know, without, um, there's an exception every once in a while. But for the most part, my calls are done on certain days and certain times. With the scheduling app, they click a link, they schedule their appointment. You don't have to do anything. The reminders go out automatically. If they need to reschedule, they can click the button in the reminder to do so automatically. It's literally hands off so you can use those few minutes that you may have spent playing phone tag or email tag to get calls set up. That's time you can use on something else. Ever since I started using Calendly, I love it because I don't have to track down people for interviews. And if they reschedule, it automatically goes into my system. And like you said, you're not playing phone tag or you're not sending messages over Instagram or Facebook. So I love that system and I've really utilized it. And really, it saves a lot of time. I think too, and did, did you feel this early in your business? This is a little bit of a sidebar. But being a mompreneur, did you feel that you had to be available 24-7 in the beginning? Yes. It's like, <laughs> oh, they want to talk to me at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, well, I can rush to the bus stop and hope the bus is on time and that my daughter gets on it. And then I can run back home and pick up this phone call. That's just crazy. <laughs> right. right. And I think, too, as you go through your business, you you stop feeling guilty about that and realize that you need to value your own time. Because if you don't value your own time, you're losing time working in your business. Yes. And here's the other thing with having a scheduling system. It allows you to train people in the way that they work with you. It shows, as you mentioned, that you value your time and from the beginning establishes that they need to value and respect the boundaries that you have set up for your business. You may make an exception and take a call outside of what's available on your schedule, but for the most part, none of us need to be working 24-7. We're not 7-Eleven, so let's pare that down and the scheduling system or the scheduling app allows you to do that. And I think it also forces us as business owners to create our own boundaries so you don't get sucked into that 24-7 all the time and, you know, you're multitasking, making dinner and you're on a phone call and you got a kid screaming at you in the background. Like that's just not using your time efficiently. 
Exactly. Now we know um, for some entrepreneurs, it, it works out that way. And if your customers understand that, that's fine. But that really should be the exception and not the norm for the way your business operates. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's jump into your third system. The third one is your communication system. And this is another pretty robust one because it covers multiple areas. Um, that's internal communication and external communication. So when I say external, I'm talking the most important person that you're speaking to, your customers. And then social media is also included. Your customer care process is part of that external communication. From that first point of contact, you need a process of if someone sends me a message here, how do I reply? What happens next? How do I track it? How do I get them to schedule a call? Hello, send them the link to your calendar. They can schedule the appointment. That's all you have to do. From there, where do you go? All of that is part of your customer care process, all the way through customer onboarding and sending them the welcome kit, which is part of that process and establishes you know, a lot of things that you want to make clear up front as you begin to work with that person. But it continues even beyond that into regular checking calls with your customer. All of that needs to be a process. Now, it can be tailored per customer, but you can't tailor what's not documented. So again, the need for a documented process. Social media, we know we're all on different platforms. Um, you get to the point where you want to delegate your social media to someone, they need to know how to represent your brand voice. Your ebook is a perfect example of how to create that boilerplate template of what we want our voice to sound like. What kind of topics do we cover, the categories that we post on. That's part of the social media process that you can delegate to someone else, but it has to be documented. They can't pull it out of your head. Um, and then internal, if you have team members, so if you start delegating, and we all delegate at some point, whether it's a person to create our graphics, someone that's working on our website, all of that, is, they're part of our team. We need to have a communication process documented. How do we deal with each of these other business owners? And I have a quick question because a lot of the systems we're talking about I don't want to say tailored to people who work with clients or one-on-one -on -one clients, but for myself, I don't work with one-on-one -on -one clients. When you say um, your customer care, does that include an email list and my welcome series of when I nurture? Is that considered customer care when I don't really work directly with customers? Would that be included Absolutely. in customer care? Okay. Yes. Now, because you are a little different, because as you mentioned, you don't do one on one services, but you're still dealing with people. So when someone buys your ebook, what's what happens after that? Do they just buy it and they never hear from you again until you want them to buy something else? There should be a follow up process for that person to continue to nurture that relationship. That's all part of your customer care. And even after a certain point, it should lead to a survey so that you know what other types of services you may be able to offer them in the future and whether, they, whether or not they actually like what they purchase from you. That's part of your customer care as a, um, a product provider, I guess is the only way I can describe that because your service is a product. But yeah, customer care, no matter what we do, we need to have that process. Does it require a lot of time to create business systems? especially if someone doesn't have like any of this, like how, you know, I'm sure it requires time, but how would you guide someone where to start? So I'm not going to lie and say it's going to take a couple of minutes because honestly to fully systemize your business, it takes months, sometimes even over a year. It really depends on, you know, the business structure and your services and products that you offer. But minimum, I would say, if you start with the basic things that you do on a regular basis to run your business, you can make it quick and easy. Create a checklist while you're completing the task. Um, then as you continue to do the task, you can add steps to it because you've missed something, or you can take something away because you notice it's redundant. And if you run a, want to be really quick and easy about documenting a process, you can um, record an audio of yourself completing the task or even do a screen video of yourself completing the process. And then you 
can go to Fiverr and send that to someone to create the documentation for you. So that oh, saves wow. you time right there. Yeah, that's a really great idea. That's awesome. Shannon, I'm sure we have a lot of listeners just kind of fumbling in their brain of all these systems that they want to complete. So please share where our listeners can find you because I don't want them coming to me because I'm not, because <laughs> I'm going to go, no, 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 no. I'm not the systems girl. <laughs> so where can they find you? Because I'm sure your website is loaded with a bunch of information on business systems. And I know you have checklists because I've used them. <laughs> so where can they find you? Okay, so I am mostly on Instagram and across the board, I am at socially savvy B A everywhere but LinkedIn. It's Shannon Baker, of course, but again, I'm mostly active on Instagram. Um, and the link in my Instagram bio actually takes you to my free resources available. So you can pick and choose which of those checklists you want. Or if you're really bold, I do have an online resource vault which that link is um, also in my Instagram bio, and it's the Lady Boss Rehab Lounge. That book contains all those resources in one location and also connects you to the Facebook group that I just started this week. And that's going to be a space where we all talk about the different challenges we have, not just with operations, but finding the balance and taking care of ourselves as mostly solopreneurs, because let's face it, it's hard, but having these processes helps so that we have time for more self-care, which we all need. So I'm looking forward to growing that group as well. I'd love to have everyone join the community. And ladies, if you're listening, I highly recommend taking Shannon up on her lounge. I'm in the lounge. I've learned so much from her. And anytime I need to implement some sort of system, Shannon's my go-to girl. So make sure you visit her on Instagram, go check out her links. I'm telling you, it may not sound like the sexiest part of your business, but when you implement and put these systems into action, well, you're going to feel pretty dang sexy when it's all done. So Shannon, thank you so much for being on the show. And I'm going to make sure that I put all your links in the show notes. Thanks again for being here. I think this is an important topic that, you know, people really need to implement into their business so they can do the self-care and they can rock their business and feel pretty dang sexy about it. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's episode. You can find a link to the download that I mentioned in the show notes. If you enjoyed listening to the show, be sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast platform. If you learned something new in today's episode, please let me know. Take a screenshot post it in Instagram stories and tag me at the underscore Shannon Baker. And remember, you are enough and you do enough. Until the next time, keep calm and streamline.